Canberra, 1962. In 1909, a site was selected to be Australia's capital territory. A vast amphitheatre, 2,000 feet above sea level, surrounded by blue hills and fed with the winding waters of the Molongo River. Canberra, the capital city, was built after choosing from 126 designs the theme being a garden city with a triangular shaped heart. The main street is widely laid and free from the clutter of outside advertising signs. For recreation, the city has little to be desired, there being facilities for golf, tennis, riding, bowls, angling, croquet and squash, along with an Olympic swimming pool and nearby mountains suitable for skiing. Foremost, of course, this is a parliamentary city, where the Commonwealth political activity has been centred since 1927, the hub being Parliament House, where the Senate and House of Representatives meet. Associated with the Parliament are also such buildings as Government House, named Yarralumba, this being the official residence of the Governor-General. Along with the Prime Minister's Lodge, there are some 20 odd embassies, the one shown being that of the United States, in which every big brick was brought at terrific cost from the mother country. King George V Memorial and many others grace the parks of the city, this one being just opposite the entrance to Parliament House. Another inspiring landmark is the Australian-American War Memorial, erected by the Australian people to commemorate the aid given to them by the United States during the war in the Pacific. On the edge of the city, at the foot of Mount Ainslie, is the Australian War Memorial, better known as the War Museum. The museum consists of a hall of memories surrounded by galleries and showrooms in which are kept the relics and records of our forces in battle. Collection pieces include paintings, drawings, sculpture, uniforms, weapons, equipment, documents and photographs. As an example, a collection of early wheels sprung at the rim and set of the axle. On leaving, one can inspect an early Japanese submarine and reflect on the uniqueness of the collection, gathered not to glorify war, but to commemorate the sacrifices of Australia's soldiers. Returning to the city, there are many scientific and institutional buildings. As an example, the Australian Forestry School, where study of forest management and protection is performed. The building includes a forestry museum and library. Nearby is another interesting building, the headquarters of the Australian Academy of Science. This circular building is ultra-modern, 
and is unusual in that it's surrounded by a water-filled moat. With a glimpse of a little holy trinity Lutheran church, we leave Canberra, a rapidly growing city, which, though born from the humblest beginnings, is now the diplomatic centre of Australia, symbolising the spirit of Australian pioneering and progress.